Welcome to Exo Magic Trick number 758.5. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Exo Magic Trick 757.5 and 758.5, click on the link directly below the video. Hey, this is a video in response to Exo Magic Trick 758. That's why I called it 758.5. Hey, in 758, we saw five formulas for extracting data with formulas, obviously, with two criteria. There's two things we want to do in this video. We want to see um, something similar, but quite different different, but we're going to have four criteria. So here's our data set, and I want to extract records over here with a formula based on an OR criteria and an AND criteria. The second thing we want to do is we want to take some of the ideas from 758 and uh, reduce them down even more so we can allow ourselves to use functions like VLOOKUP, which pretty much everyone uses. Now the whole trick to this, just as in 758, is we're going to create an extra column here uh, that shows us not only when it's true, so our criteria is 1 or 2, so as we go down this column we can either, we extract a record that's either 1 or 2, and the dates from this column have to be greater than or equal to this and less than or equal to this, which means between these two. This is AND criteria, this is OR criteria. So we can see this is true, right? There it is. The date is between those. But in this lookup column, we want to have a number, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. And the whole trick is we're creating a lookup column, and then over here we can just use a straight V lookup, even though we have this complex criteria. In essence, we need to look up, you know, this or that and uh, between these. All right, so here's the trick. And I'm going to use the AND and OR function, which is quite different than what we did over here. And I like the AND and OR functions in terms of creating a formula because it seems to me more explicit. The logic that I'm using when I look at AND and OR seems more easy to understand than, say, some, some other uh, possibility. So the first thing is we either have to have one or two, which is OR, AND we have to have our date between. So we're going to start off with the AND. And what AND does is it says logical test 1 and logical test 2. Both of these are going to have to be true for us to see a true here. Now, the first trick is. What is the first logical test? Well, it's I'm looking at this cell, and is this cell equal to this or that? So the first logical test inside the AND will be an OR function. An OR, same as AND, has two logical tests, except for this one or this one can come out to be true, and OR will deliver a true to the first argument of AND. So ready? is this cell, and we don't have to worry about cell references because we're only copying down a column, is that equal to this one? Well, this one needs to be locked going down, so I hit F4, that's locked going down. That's the first logical test. Or, and I'm going to use my arrow key to get that D3, is that equal to this? And lock it with the F4 key going down. So. Either one of these can come out to be true, and OR will deliver a true to AND. So now I'm going to close parentheses, all right, comma. And now the second logical test. Now this one, we have to look at a single date, and we have to say, uh, are two things true about it? Is this date right here greater than or equal to that and less than or equal to that? So now you put an AND for the second logical test, AND. And I simply say, is that? greater than or equal to, and why are we doing greater than or equal to? Because under a date is a serial number. Is it greater than or equal to the smaller date? F4, lock it going down, comma. And here's the second logical test, that same date. Is that less than or equal to the bigger date? And then F4 and lock it going down. All right, so we have our two logical tests, and these both have to be true. So that's kind of a nice construction there. We're back to this original AND over here, right? Logical test 2, logical test 1 is an OR, no problem. Now I can copy this down. And we'll see we've simulated Control-Enter to put the formula in the cell. And I'm going to double click and send it down. Now we see that. Now um, I've actually done some videos with advanced filter and stuff like that where we could extract based on this true, but we want a formula here. The problem with leaving it true is there's duplicates, right? So VLOOKUP. Um, 
can't handle that so well. We could do an array formula with index, but um, part of the point of this is to not do an, an array. So let's take an idea from uh, 758. Now notice I have a label up here, and I like labels, field names at the top of columns because it's more explicit. It tells you what's going on. But in this video over here, perfectly all right to do this. You put a zero here, right? Right? It doesn't ha give you good information, but it's going to help us with this formula. Now what do we do? Well, remember, trues and falses can be converted to ones and zeros. Now a lot of times you see double negative. That's only one of many ways to convert trues and falses to ones and zeros. Anytime you do an arithmetic operation, whether it's adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, raising to a power, boom, you convert a true or false to an, um, a one or zero. Now usually we see in the form the videos I've done arrays, but here we're just going to convert a single false or true to a one or zero. Now, but what's going to happen when I do this? If I say this is false, what's false plus zero? The fact that we're doing an operation converts it to a number. Control enter. Now, but what happens when we call it down? Copy down. It's still it's going looking one of um, adding the one above, right, plus whatever this logical test comes out to be. But as soon as we copy it down to a true, we get a one. And now when I copy it down to here, there's a duplicate. I copy it down to here. Now we see a two. Notice, now I'm going to double click and send it down. Anytime we see the first occurrence of a new number, we have a true. First occurrence of a new number, true. First occurrence of a new number, true. Well, no problem. The lookup functions in general will just darn skip over all the duplicates. When you get down to here, four, we're only interested in the first one. That we're not interested. That we're not interested. Match VLOOKUP. If we say do an exact match, it will grab just the first one. So the other's duplicates are, in essence, irrelevant. Now, I want to, I, I don't like this zero here. I really want to have the label there. I'm going to even type uh, <clears throat> And then I'm going to add some wrap or something. By the way, I shot this video in. Um, full screen mode, so you probably want to zoom it up. I should have said that at the beginning of the video. I'm a terrible speller. I'm sorry about that. What happens? Well, anytime you do an operation, as we know since uh, grammar school, you can't add a word and a number. Like, what's red plus 2? Well, it doesn't make any sense. And in Excel, doesn't make any sense is value error. But guess what? There's a function that will specifically, and there's many functions that specifically ignore values. One of them is our favorite sum function. And get this, sum can take this, which is a false or true. We can come to the end. Notice there's number, number, number. I'm going to type a comma instead of a plus. The second number is that right there. Well, shoot, it'll just ignore that. Here we're doing an operation on a true and false. That sum will do an operation on this, calculate, convert it to 0, and it will ignore that value right there. So I can um, control enter and then double click and send it down. And so that formula will work all the way down. All right, so now now that we've created a lookup column, it's just a matter of uh, a simple lookup or um, VLOOKUP or index match combination. Now, it, we assume here, I'm going to leave this here just this was for illustration purposes for the video. You would delete this and just have this column. VLOOKUP you have to have this column as the first column. Now, I'm going to show you a quick example um, after we finish this one here of if you can't. Here, we're assuming we can. We can just add it as the first column, and then you can do a straight VLOOKUP. No problem. We still need to turn our data extraction formula off over here when we get past the uh, fifth record. So I'm going to come here and say equals max of this whole column, and then boom. I love that. I learned that from uh, Peter SS and uh, the, one of his posts to use the max on a column like this. Boom, now we know uh, past which row we want to uh, turn the formula off. The other thing about this whole um, example here is we have this extra new column here that just has numbers. I just type those in. So now it's a matter of just going if 
this number right here. And now when I go this way, I need it locked. But when I copy it down, it needs to move. So I'm going to lock the column reference only, not the row. Anytime that's greater than that F4 in all directions, what do we want? Well, if it's greater than, that means past this one right here, which means we've got our last record to extract. Down here, I want a blank, so I just put double quote, comma. And guess what? The value of false is a straight VLOOKUP. I love this. And what's the VLOOKUP number? That right there, F4. I hit F5. F4 to lock the column reference, comma. The lookup table, not the field names, but be sure this is the first one. It is That's always where the lookup value is. F, I hit F5 again. F4. And then comma, what's the column index? Well, right now it's type. Um, that's the second, then the third, then the fourth, then the fifth, then the sixth. Well, we could use match. But guess what? This is a straight data extract. We're, never, we're always going to extract all the columns. So I'm going to use columns with an S. No problem. Don't forget, if there weren't these weren't in the same order, or you didn't have all the columns, then you use match right there. But columns, I'm just going to say I'm sitting in K11. So dollar sign K11 colon K11. That will increment a number. Oh, but wait a second. That won't work because I'm in a single cell, and that would be 1. I'm actually going to do J. So that should be that one right there, J. Did I get that right? This is 11, so that should be J11. I don't see the, well, OK, if it doesn't work, we'll come back and fix it. But right now, it's going uh, from there to there. How many columns are there? J to K, 2. The fact that this isn't locked, when we move it over, that K will move to L, and the columns will deliver 3. So that's the column index. And then mo very important, lookup range is uh, false <coughs> or 0. By the way, I've never used false ever for VLOOKUP in all the zillions of VLOOKUP formulas I've ever done. I've just done 0. I never had a problem. Uh, it's easier to type. OK, so there is our value if false is the whole VLOOKUP, close parentheses. And guess what? Just Control-Enter. Not I don't see any curly brackets over there. Copy it over. And I have a date I need to format this. And I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Control-Shift-4 for uh, currency and then double click and send it down and sure enough there's my extract from me now if I come over here this was an or I can just get rid of this right so now I'm only looking at one and sure enough we can see everything work just fine just a great way an alternative if you don't want to do arrays and you can add an extra column now just briefly over here I did the same exact uh, formula over here based on this criteria uh, Counting, we have four. Did I do a different data set? Control Z. Uh, 1, 930. Oh, I see. This one's got a different date than this one. So if I did, uh, oh, and I did end of month. OK, so anyway, the criteria is there. Now we're just going to come over here and do the same thing. If this one right here, column reference locked is greater than this, F4 then double quote. Otherwise, index. And the whole point here, I'm sorry, I should have said it. The whole point is we're not allowed a uh, this as the first column, so we had to put it at the end. Or you could even put it somewhere else. Uh, but nevertheless, we have this column, the array of values we want to return. Well, how about this one? And we're going to lock it with the row reference lock. So I'm going to go down, but when we move over to SR, that whole dancing ants will move over to SR comma, the row number is going to be our match. With this as the lookup, F4 column reference lock, but not the row. The lookup array, well, we already created it right here. F4 locks in all directions, comma, 0 for exact, close parentheses on the match. That's our row number, close parentheses on the index. That's our value if false. That's the whole index, close parentheses. Control Enter not control shift enter no curly brackets copy it over let's see if i can point to the smart tag and say fill without formatting there we go cuz i already had the formatting there now i double click and send it down and sure enough um, 
we have our uh, formula here based on this uh, and or sum formula creating a lookup column in this one we use index and match lookup column here and in this one over here we were allowed to do it in the first column of our lookup table and so we used uh, VLOOKUP. Alright, see you next video.